Good evening, welcome to the National Exhibition Centre in Birmingham for the World Figure Skating Championships. It's the first time that they've been held here for 45 years and can proudly boast to be the biggest championships ever. Over the next hour, we're going to be concentrating on the pair's short programme. But before that, here's just a flavour of this evening's opening ceremony. It was based on precision team skating performed by 68 skaters chosen from eight different ice rinks around the country, aged between 9 and 26. The costumes and the music reflected the four countries of the United Kingdom. Completing the ceremony, the parade of flag from all the countries competing here. It was certainly a colourful start to the 1995 World Championships, the ninth time they've been held in this country. The first was back in 1898. The last time, as I mentioned earlier, was 45 years ago. Barry Davis looks at the changes. The contrast could hardly be greater. Here at the NEC, in a building whose style 45 years ago would have been thought somewhat futuristic, are 220 skaters from 52 nations competing in a championship televised to the world and costing £3 million to put on. When Britain's Jeanette Oldweg won silver at the Empire Pool Wembley, there were just 54 other skaters. And the organisers, from an outlay of under £2,000, made a princely profit of £693.11.7. Jeanette went on to gold the following year and the Olympic title in 1952. The men's champion at Wembley was the American Dick Button. It was the third of his five victories. Britain had to wait another 26 years for a first. A performance by the Olympic champion John Carey, which for its artistry became and remains a landmark in the development of skating. And a beautiful performance by Curry. I did not see a fault in that program. A young Robin Cousins learned from it. Four years on, succeeded Curry as the Olympic champion. John Nix, now coached the American champions, took silver in the 1950 pairs event with his sister Jennifer and three years later they were world champions but ice dancing didn't have a world crown at Wembley Paris in 1952 was the first and there Jean Westwood and Lawrence Demi began a nine-year British domination of the event they won four times so did Courtney Jones twice with June Markham and twice more with Doreen Denny then after a four-year gap came Diane Towler and Bernard Ford, also four-time winners. The 70s then belonged to the Soviet Union. Before, there arrived a couple who gave ice dancing a whole new meaning. You only have to look and you know that you have seen the best in the world. Yes, Jane Torvald and Christopher Dean, of course. Well, they're not here this year, but one familiar face from that feature will be joining me throughout the week, the former Olympic champion, Robin Cousins. And Robin, you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Was that Getting in 19... older. <laughs> yes, 15 years ago. 15 years ago last week, actually, to be precise, Olympics. You, and, must, um, you must be delighted, though, to see a championship like this come to Great Britain. It's very thrilling. I'm just very sad that I never got to compete in my day or my era in a championship of this calibre in, in my home country but uh, the uh, the championships so far have got off to a great start and not only sort of the championships but um, the crowds coming to the practice sessions I mean the practice sessions themselves are becoming championships it's terrific 
You mentioned that you weren't able to compete in a major championship here. Do you not think, though, that this might be a lot of pressure for some of the British skaters here? Well, I think, obviously, it's, it's going to be different because you're only used to, obviously, getting a few of your supporters at the various championships around the world, but suddenly you're finding 6,000 of them screaming for you. And um, even when we have our, our national championships, they're not in arenas of this size. Mm -hmm. And uh, as she said to Steve Cousins today, you know, it, it must be good, in fact, to have the crowds coming into the practice sessions because now it's not only going to be in front of the audience and in front of the judges that you're suddenly going to get this ovation. They've been, they've been doing it all week. You certainly have great experience for them. And as Robin said, the championships has got underway. We're now going to take a look at the pair's short program. Just what are the judges looking for and who are the main contenders? Well, here with all the answers is Robin Cousins and Barry Davis. On the strength of their gold medals in Europe, Mandy Wurzel and Ingo Steuer will be the pair most in focus. Pair skating continues to get more difficult and more creative. With the Germans last month in Germany, it all came together with their daring and innovative moves. But a year ago in Lillehammer, they showed us just exactly how difficult and dangerous pair skating at this level can be. The European silver medalists were the Czechs, Radka Kovarikova and René Novotny. Many felt they should have won. Well, they are my personal favourites, and many other skaters agree that they possess all the qualities that make great champions. Beautiful throws, classic style, and absolute precision timing. Here at these championships, trained by probably the greatest champion of them all, Irina Rodnina. It feels really good when, you know, people say, well, you should have, you know, won and everything. So it's really supporting us that, you know, people are telling us this. And so we are here to, you know, do our best again. The defending champions are Yevgenia Shishkova and Vadim Naumov. History tells us when looking for a winner, look no further than Russia. And following traditional Russian styles, they are compact, precise, and fast. And with Eugenia's size, they have created some incredibly unusual lifts. And if one pair from St. Petersburg doesn't make it, then another might. Marina Elseva and Andrei Bushkov, the former European champions. And if they may lack the poise and elegance of some of the other teams, their content is not to be overlooked. And don't write off the improving Americans, Jenny Mino and Todd Sand. Well, a lot can change between seasons. Here, romance has blossomed. Announcing their engagement, it has given a whole new aura to their presence on the ice, and they come to Birmingham with medals in their sights.